The digital economy is estimated to account for 15% of the world's GDP in 2020 and has been projected to continue to grow with the work and lifestyle changes occasioned by the COVID-19 challenges. The global pandemic has indeed enforced realignment in the ways people, businesses and governments engage with their stakeholders. This has brought about increased use of the internet to facilitate communication. How would businesses have survived in the thick of the pandemic without virtual communication facilitated by the internet? Your guess is as good as mine. However, any focus on the role of internet in the society will be incomplete without discussing internet access, in this case through broadband, which plays major roles in driving increased internet penetration while promoting economic growth in the process. The positive impact of broadband on the output of developing economies brings into fore the role of communications infrastructure providing companies like Main One Nigeria Limited, which is one of Nigeria's foremost and leading providers of innovative telecommunications services and network solutions for businesses, educational institutions and households in West Africa. Since its inception in 2010, Main One has developed a reputation for providing highly reliable services to major telecoms operators, internet service providers, government agencies, private, large, medium and small enterprises, as well as educational institutions. I'm sure you're already wondering if the Bank of Industry is involved in Main One. Well, the answer is a yes. As a development finance institution, BOI has developed innovative financing packages for different sectors of the economy, especially sectors that create inclusive and sustainable impact in line with the bank's vision and mission. Welcome to this week's edition of BOI Impact. I am Adiza Olaoshibiko. Main one with its own submarine cable from Europe to West Africa, with landing stations in Nigeria, Ghana, and Portugal, has uniquely positioned itself to deliver complete integrated ICT solutions for businesses to harness a true broadband infrastructure network. According to CEO Main One, Ms. Funke Okweke, Main One's strategy remains to invest in infrastructure that supports building a digital ecosystem to address the deficits faced in the West African region. Main One came into existence about two years after I had relocated back to Nigeria. And one of the things I observed is that we really did not have that backbone infrastructure. Mobile had taken off, but we did not have access to the internet. Um, the, most of the internet connections we had were through cyber cafes, reliant on VSAT. And while the rest of the world was starting to enjoy digital explosion, we truly had a digital divide. That was my inspiration based on my experience in the United States. I recognized that if we could make internet access available to Nigerians, to more West Africans, um, we could improve outcomes. And that was the inspiration. So I started um, doing the feasibility work and the planning. Um, to see if we could fund a private submarine cable to West Africa. There was a one single cable feeding the west coast of Africa, SAT-3. For 10 years, more than 10 years, we've had unlimited pipes in terms of capacity to the internet um, into the country, not just from main one, but from other investors as well. So how come we have not been able to figure out how we get this capacity to our people who need it and who, if given the access, would benefit from it. And our economy would benefit from it because then you could create more jobs, we could do more service industries. We, we truly have the potential to do more with our young, um, energetic population. So that is, that is a challenge. It's, it's pulling down the barriers that keep um, infrastructure from being developed, services from being rolled out, 
um, capable competition um, from taking place in an open market. And um, we continue to work at that every day. At this time, I mean, one has um, in Nigeria only two expatriates out of about 400 staff. Um, we have trained our staff right from the inception with our submarine cable supplier in the United States. Our staff are indeed world class. Um, and across the board, we invest a lot in training. We partner with leading global technology companies, and our staff have um, great access to them. We put in place the programs where we have technical support from them, and we also um, ensure that our staff are properly certified to do the job on hand. And we're able to operate this world-class network with Nigerians. And sometimes, you know, we're the first rolling out global technology, and we're giving this global players um, feedback um, to even make improvements to their products. As we're seeing on the global stage and Nigerians in diaspora, Nigerians have the capability to, to be, I mean, we're world class, we're a world class operation um, run mostly by Nigerians. She disclosed that with BOI support, the company has upgraded its infrastructure to world class standard. It's been a great relationship. Um, we came to the relationship um, later on in our business. Um, probably we had been in existence about seven years, almost 10 years. Um, I could have been in service almost seven years before uh, we started um, cultivating or looking to the bank of industry for funding. Um, it was easier than I expected because I thought there were different rules and we would not um, qualify. Um, but clearly we did. Um, the process has been very professional and the terms have been such um, funding in local currency uh, where the bulk of our revenues come in local currency have been such that it allowed us to grow our business um, and continue to invest locally. So it's been um, to be honest a very positive experience for us and one that we want to continue to hold on to. We have upgraded the core of our backbone um, between Lagos and Portugal by almost 100% um, since um, the pandemic, since the beginning of this year. And we are looking to do additional upgrades um, even before the end of the year. Upstream in Europe, Portugal was a hub for us where our cable terminates and connecting onto the rest of the world. We have also upgraded those links where we're now having links capable of carrying terabits of information per second. So we have been able to um, upgrade the technology from 10 gigabit per second wavelength to 100 gigabit per second wavelength. So um, that allows us to carry a lot more traffic. Um, into Nigeria and indeed all of West Africa today and you talk about the backbone of the internet um, indeed um, and then also expand our tier 3 data center we had built in 2015 the civil work so that's the shell for the data center but as you have all these computers coming in and equipment you need to add more power capacity you need to add more cooling fire protection and um, we have been able to successfully do that with the support from BOI. Our staff strength has grown in the past um, two years, for example. We have brought in graduate trainees. I believe the first set was 30. Even during this COVID period, we've hired an additional 20. These are young engineers or young graduates who we put through an academy and then we bring into the workforce as trainees. And again, just continue to be amazed at the quality and caliber of young Nigerians. However, I think the biggest impact that we see is more in the ecosystem. So for each of these projects that we're doing, um, be it if we're laying fiber, um, we work with a lot of companies, if we're deploying um, new power and cooling equipment. We work with Nigerian companies um, to do that. 
we work a lot with the startup ecosystem. So be it fintechs um, in creating cloud computing solutions so that they can drive their businesses from Nigeria. Through the support of the Bank of Industry, the company is still able to meet its customers' demand in the COVID-19 pandemic. At the immediate point where companies were locking down, a lot of our customers suspended their services because they did not know what was going to take place. So you can imagine, be it hotels, airlines, educational institutions, um, was to shut down. So clearly, we were looking at cash flow uncertainty um, in the short term. And so having that moratorium definitely helped. Um, and the tenor elongation is something that we have been able to benefit with as well. And I mentioned investment and the need to grow our network. Obviously, we've had to spend more cash to do that. So certainly having this kind of support um, was critical to us. If we were working with international lenders, and we have worked with international lenders, you're unlikely to get that kind of support. And that is how you know, it hurts our local economy or inhibits our ability to develop. So the fact that these things are really tailored to the local environment and the pressures we face in the local environment actually make them even more meaningful. Welcome back from the interview with Ms. Funke Opeke, the founder and CEO of Main One. I'm sure you must have learned a lot from that interview. Indeed, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Ms. Opeke has proven this beyond reasonable doubt. Under her watch, Main One has grown to become the leading provider of wholesale and enterprise connectivity and data center services across West African region in partnership with major global technology companies. The increasing demand for cloud-based services and modular data center solutions among enterprises and government agencies is why MDXI may want tier three certified data center for cloud hosting and co-location needs was established at a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Chief Operations Officer of MDXI, Mr. Binga Adebiji, he spoke on the need for establishing data center. MDXI, um, as a data center company of main one, um, we're focused on data center and cloud services offering across West Africa. So we're not just in Nigeria, we're in Nigeria, but we have uh, data MDXI in Ghana, we have in Ivory Coast, and then of course, don't forget that as main one, um, we also have a cable extended to um, um, Senegal. So we have our presence across the West Africa. Our objective is to develop an ecosystem in West Africa, um, making Nigeria a center point, uh, but then having connectivity and connecting the entire West Africa region to the rest of the world. That we've been able to do with our cable. Now, we are leveraging, MDXI is a fully owned subsidiary, so we are carrier neutral data center. But we used the opportunity of our parent company, Min One, to establish data center across the region following the footprint of the cable landing. Data center is a computer room, basically. A computer room where you keep um, um, infrastructure, IT infrastructure. And such an IT infrastructure um, requires that you keep them in certain environmental condition of uh, temperature, humidity, and she will have some level of security, um, she will have some level of um, proactive monitoring of um, you know, the environment itself against fire, against smoke. So when you bring all that together um, in, a, in, a, in the building, um, that building can be said to be a data center. Now, of course, there are different um, you know, levels of doing that, but basically that is what a data center is. Today we are now in the world of information, and information is sent across in the middle of the night. You know, people do transactions across boundaries and all that stuff. So that that information, so they were in the world of information. Information is moving. You know, people are uh, downloading YouTube applications. You know, bandwidth that used to be so high then is no longer you know doing anything today. People now talk about gig and you know hundred gig and all that stuff. Then it used to be two point four. 
something is it used to be one point something meg and all that. So, so the, 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 the business environment has changed. Um, we are in the world of information. Now, this information is sent from one platform to the other, from one network to the other. If you look at the internet, the internet is actually um, a connection or interconnection of servers across the world. Those servers are in different places and they need to run, they need to be available. So if today you want to search something on Google and you type Google and you are not getting it, you feel frustrated that you're supposed to get it. Or it says application is not available or something. You'll be wondering why it's not available. So now because um, you know, things has to be available 24-7, that information you know, needs to be kept somewhere. Now, internet also, I also mentioned that internet is a kind of um, interconnection of so many servers. Now, this meaning that those servers need to also interconnect at a certain point. That is what the data center has come to do. Mr. Debiji said it is imperative that organizations host their content and processes in commercial facilities which are best suited to handle critical IT infrastructure. Uh, before we launched, uh, there, was, um, there was no co-location data center in Nigeria. Um, businesses, enterprises have their own server rooms. You know, they keep their information in their server rooms, what they call server rooms. Um, that has a lot of disadvantages, which some of the businesses eventually, I mean, the optakers, the, the first movers, when we launched, uh, they saw some of those advantages. When you have a building and then you have your server room on the second floor, on the third floor, if the building gets uh, destroyed, everything gets destroyed. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, people also made the mistake of backing up. You have backup tapes, and the backup tapes are also in the next room in there. So everything just gets destroyed. Now, you, 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 you cannot do that anymore. So people have seen the need to have your infrastructure separate from where your operations are. That provides you a level of, um, um, you know, kind of resilience. That means if something happens to your businesses, then you have your application, you can use that and just start all, all over again. The data center also provides for um, interconnection of servers. So today we have, um, in our data center, we have uh, West African Internet Exchange. Uh, we also have a point for the um, um, Internet Exchange point of Nigeria, IXPN, is also in our, in our location. So meaning that servers in Nigeria can connect the servers in Nigeria on our platform. So if you are a user and you want to access whatever, um, another server in Nigeria, you don't have to go to the U.S. and come back. That improves, you know, the, the, the latency and, of course, saves you the cost of the bandwidth. So those are the things that the data center has, um, uh, the gap that the data center has come to fill. It requires a lot of investment. At the level that we are playing, um, you know, you need to bring in very massive generators that um, possibly are not really readily available in here because they are special generators that cannot, it's not off the shelf. So it has to be specially made for that application. We call them DCC rated generator. That means data center ready generator. Now it has to be a generator that can continue to run for six days, for 10 days until it's due for service. Yeah, that's the kind of generators that we use. Now there are other applications, there are other you know, equipment that you have to bring in. So a lot of money is involved. The, the, the advantage of the BOI, what BOI brings to the table, is ability, they give us the ability to access cheap finance that is very, very easy, pocket friendly in terms of interest rate. And that allows us to be able to, um, you know, boldly go into this business and be able to service our customers, build the kind of infrastructure that we want to build, and then, you know, grow organically until, you know, we are able to, and of course, pay as a schedule, not the kind of um, interest rate that will um, allow you to go out of business. So I think that is one thing. Uh, with that, we are able to provide you know, job opportunities. Uh, today, if I look at um, direct employment, um, the data center itself, don't forget that I mean, one as a group, we have the cable landing station, which is our connectivity business. And then, of course, we have this um, data center business. Uh, the data center and generally the data center, which is uh, the co-location and then the cloud, um, we directly, I think we, are, we, we have about 70, between 70 and 80 employees direct, I mean, full staff. Um, Non-full staff, I mean, which are maybe like, um, you know, the clean, low, low level, these are engineers, graduates, right? Um, if you're looking at about low level, I mean, maybe like um, secondary school, other people who are providing one kind of support um, and securities and all that, that would be talking about another 30. 
So altogether, you're looking at this infrastructure as giving employment to close to 100, if not more, um, you know, uh, direct employment. Now, if you look at indirect employment, so some of our service provider, ISP, you know, because we are able to provide them the platform, they have so many other people that they have employed. So the, the impact is really, really great. And that is why, um, you know, it's a, it's a good thing when you have the likes of Bank of Industry, um, which is a industrial bank of federal government, if I want to put it that way, you know, to support the development of uh, not, just, not just technology, but, you know, the development of industry in Nigeria. And I think it's, it's very, very great. Now, I believe, and I will give credit where it's due, Mr. President um, took a big step in October last year where he expanded the mandate of the Ministry of Communications to include digital economy. And the minister has been, they put a strategy in place, they've done a national broadband. We see initiatives, they continue to drive. Um, unfortunately, we have a huge gap that they are just trying to try to close. Uh, and I think the initial steps that they have taken have been very strong. So we truly wish them um, success as they now drive to implement the plans and strategies they've put in place. The Bank of Industry is indeed Nigeria's foremost development finance institution. The bank did not hesitate to finance the expansion of Main One, West Africa's first privately owned open access submarine cable system, which interconnects Lagos, Nigeria, Ghana, and Seychelles in Portugal. The company has laid a 7,000 kilometer fiber optic cable system across the bottom of the ocean from Portugal to Nigeria and has recorded new breakthroughs such as the launch of West Africa's leading data center company, MDXI. Before I sign off, please be reminded that the Bank of Industry remains committed to its mission of transforming Nigeria's industrial sector by providing financial and business support services to genuine entrepreneurs in different sectors of the Nigerian economy. Till we come your way again next week, thank you for watching this week's episode of BOI Impact. I am Hadiza Olao Shibiko. Bye for now.